Hi everyone and welcome to the next live based upon my book Beyond Asanas. Now we are on chapter 17 of the book so uh, we're more than halfway done. The book has uh, 30 chapters total and in each chapter I look at uh, a particular asana. I look at how we do it and more importantly I look at the stories and the myths behind the asanas uh, to try to understand why uh, certain asanas are included in yoga. Uh, for instance, there are asanas named after sages. Why is that? There are asanas named after um, specific animals. Why is that? So this book uh, aims to demystify that. And in this series of lives, I, I discuss uh, the different aspects of each asana. So today's chapter and today's asana is called Dhanur Asana. And uh, Dhanur Asana is also known as Bow Pose. Dhanur is Bow. <clears throat> And uh, about about this asana, what I find really interesting is that um, yoga is supposed to be a practice uh, to find a sense of fulfillment, of peace. We you know we preach ahimsa. Ahimsa is one of the uh, you know the one of the um, uh, yamas uh, in um, uh, in in yoga. So why is there a an asana named after? Um, you know, after a weapon of destruction, uh, you know, so why is that? So in this chapter, I wanted to take a look at that. And uh, basically, uh, in yoga and Vedanta philosophy, we believe that anything that can be misused, you know, so for instance, a weapon can be misused. So anything that can be misused can also be used. So these are the two different aspects of anything in life, any situation, any object, any human being, anything in life, there's a positive and a negative, you know, so there's the yin and the yang. Similarly, there's a use and a misuse. Um, and we discuss that extensively in Vedanta philosophy. And so uh, in the stories uh, in this chapter, there are three stories. And I look at how uh, the, the weapon of the bow uh, features prominently in, in each of them and how it shows uh, that a bow can either be misused or used and if it is used well, if it is used consciously, it can even lead to large-scale uh, upliftment. So the first story uh, that, I, uh, that I've discussed in this is uh, called A Bow Each. Okay, and this story is about, about how uh, uh, Lord Vishwakarma was given the task of being the architect of the universe. So once the creation had happened, he had to figure out the laws, the do's and the don'ts. And, you know, he had to make sure that the universe functioned and, uh, you know, uh, went forward uh, in a healthy and in a balanced way. And very soon when Lord Vishwakarma was uh, putting in place all of these ideas, he realized that um, if there there was no system of checks and balances, if there was no system of um, uh, kind of offsetting the negative with the positive, uh, the, the balance would very quickly and very easily go off and the universe could self-destruct, you know, because everybody would, you know, start fighting with each other. So they, it could very easily lead to a place of confusion and in that way the universe could self-destruct. So he decided, he realized then that war, if, if, he wanted to main, if he wanted to maintain peace in the universe, he had to make sure that there was war, the possibility of war, um, good, righteous, fair war. And to, for that to happen, he, it also had to be important that uh, the weapons used in the war were also uh, very powerful. So he decided to create uh, two weapons, two bows actually, um, which would wield so much power, which would be so powerful that nobody could stand a chance against them. And these would be wielded only by uh, very righteous personalities, righteous warriors. So uh, he's, these were uh, actually two invincible bows and he crafted them himself. And he said that uh, these bows would be so powerful that even if they're not being used, you have to put them back in their cases because they have so much power that they can destroy anything that's in, in their orbit. And he created two such bows. One he called uh, the Pinak and the other one he, he called the Sharanga. And the, these are two powerful bows which will figure in the next story. And he decided that the only people worthy of these would be uh, Vishnu and Shiva. 
and Shiva's uh, bow came to be the pinak and Vishnu's bow was the sharanga and these bows throughout history and in all these mythological stories have been used time and time again for righteous purposes. So in the second story, so the my second story called Winning Hearts sort of goes along with this. And this story is about how um, the king, uh, king called Drupad, King Drupad, whose daughter is the famous Draupadi, uh, he wanted to find the, uh, the best suitor for her, the best husband for her. And the only way he could do that uh, was if he had, if he held a swayamvar. Okay, and in that Swayamvar, uh, Draupadi was free to choose who she wanted to marry. Along with that, uh, the, the potential suitors had to undergo and pass certain tests. So King Drupad uh, devised a very difficult challenge. He said that uh, any prospective suitor uh, who wanted Draupadi's hand would have to shoot a bow through the eye of a fish, which would a rotating fish. So he crafted this metallic fish, which would be rotating in the air. But now the suitors could not just look at the, the, uh, the fish and shoot the bow because that's too easy. What they would have to do is right underneath that fish on the floor would be a, uh, uh, some water, you know, like a bowl of water or a pool of water. And looking at that pool of water and seeing the fish rotating in that pool of water, they had to look down, but shoot up. And uh, they had to, and this this little gadget that he had made, this device that he had created, it's called the Matsyantra. So Yantra is like it's a it's an instrument, and this one because it was an instrument of fish, it's Matsyantra. So uh, the the and and he said, okay, the the people who want to uh, participate in this challenge, there is only one bow that you can use, and this bow is the Pinak, and this is Lord Shiva's bow. And uh, one by one, many suitors came, many strong uh, kings and powerful kings had come. And uh, most of them could not even lift this bow, which was so powerful and which was so heavy and for only the greatest warrior. But Arjun came and Arjuna could lift that bow very easily. And looking down, you know, he could shoot up very easily because he was such a skilled uh, warrior. So this this is uh, in the winning hearts. This is how uh, the bow called Pinak, which had been, uh, you know, devised um, for righteousness, was also used in this like romantic kind of story in mythology. And finally, because I've used, uh, you know, I've spoken about Arjun and his uh, his the swim word that he went to. My last story in the chapter is also about Arjuna, and this is about and the story is called a fine warrior, and this is about what a great warrior Arjuna was. And um, this story is about how um, you know Arjuna uh, and his brothers one day uh, were undergoing a test. Uh, that was put to them by Dronacharya. Dronacharya was their teacher who had taught them all the skills of warfare and everything. So Dronacharya then said, uh, told the brothers that there is a there is a bird sitting on a tree and you have to shoot the, the bird in the eye. So the first uh, per, the first brother who comes is Yudhishthir and Dronacharya says, ask him, what do you see? And Yudhishthir says, well, I see everything. I see the birds, I see other birds, I see the trees, I see the leaves, I see the earth, I see you, I see me. So uh, Dronacharya says, okay, wrong answer, next. So then Nakula comes and uh, Dronacharya asks him, well, what do you see? And Nakula says, well, I see everything too. And I, I, in fact, I see other trees and I see flowers and I see everything. Dronacharya says, well, that's the wrong answer. And then Bhim comes and he, he asks, um, Bhim, well, what do you see? So Bhim says, well, I see the clouds also. So one by one, the brothers were um, seeing more and more of the landscape of the scenery. Finally, Arjuna comes and Dronacharya asks him, what do you see? And Arjuna says, I only see black, the black of the bird's pupil, the eye, the pupil in the eye of the bird. And Dronacharya says, well, you are now ready to shoot the bird. And, you know, Arjuna shoots. And this shows how um, Arjuna had this uh, very clear razor sharp focus which made him such a great warrior so in this story um, the significance and symbolism came out in every single one of these stories so dhanurasana even though uh, it's a it's a weapon a weapon can be used or misused and we see how uh, the dhanur uh, you know, a weapon of destruction, which was cre even created for destruction, it was used in a swamvar. Uh, we see how, um, you know, a, a warrior at any given point in time can participate in a swamvar or he can participate in a war and he can use the same kind of weapons in both. 
so uh, this pose also um, it there is a direct symbolism with the uh, bow because in dhanurasana if you pull too hard you could injure yourself so you have to have that right um, right balance between uh, strength and between flexibility even in a bow if you pull too hard uh, you know you could break the bow and if you don't pull hard enough the arrow will not go uh, to the target so we see this sense of balance also um, you know when it comes to the symbolism of the bow and the actual asana uh, and in this uh, chapter I also have the summary of the important points of this uh, of this posture and the first point is uh, we must know when to push and when to pull ourselves back so as not to get injured in life and in our practice so directly related to the practice a lot of people in the uh, because they're they they feel that they're very flexible uh, sometimes overreach asanas they want to do a lot of asanas before the body is ready so this um, this the the purpose of this asana is to actually show you uh, a sense of balance like just see how much you can do um, don't overstretch yourself otherwise you're going to get hurt and um, and there have been uh, if you see uh, as a final note on this chapter, uh, you, you, if you if you think about like other cultures, like for instance, you have Cupid's bow, you have Kamdev's bows. All of these, um, you know, Cupid has been known to uh, kind of shoot bows and cause a lot of um, problems. Same with Kamdev, you know, shooting bows um, into people's uh, shooting arrows into people's hearts, and you know where they they were not meant to be affections, where they're not meant to be, uh, causing a lot of uh, confusion and destruction in that way. So, so these show us, you know, that this bow and arrow uh, symbolism exists in so many cultures, but just how we use it is, is what makes a difference. So that's it um, for today. This was chapter 17 um, of Beyond Asanas, which is Dhanurasana. If you have any questions, let me know. You can either leave a comment or you can email me. Thank you so much. Bye.